What's up guys, D here, and in today's video I wanted to make a guide for newer players who are looking to get into Escape from Tarkov. Uh, this game has an extremely steep learning curve uh, and is pretty intimidating to get into, so uh, I wanted to make a video for people who are curious and interested, uh, but maybe a little intimidated by it, so let's begin. Alright, well here are the basics. The PMC right here, this is your main character. So this is your stash, basically anything you bring out of a raid or anything you buy from any of the traders gets put into your stash. Uh, this is persistent and as long as it's in your stash, it's safe. This allows you to pick and choose whatever you want to bring into the raid, uh, but be warned anything you lose within the raid uh, could possibly be lost forever. Before you go on a raid, you have a chance to insure your gear and I highly recommend you insure all of your gear. Armor, your gun definitely, tactical rig, backpack, you want to insure them. It's going to cost you money, but in the long run, it's going to be worth it because the amount of money it's going to cost to rebuy these items is very high. And unless you're running super high-end gear, a lot of times you're going to see your gear back, especially if you're running pack of armor or uh, tactical rigs or just regular backpacks. You'll almost guaranteed get those back. The other option is to play as a scav. Scavs are AI enemies that patrol the different raid locations. They shoot PMCs on site and are usually lightly geared uh, with low-end weapons. Think of them as generic bad guy NPCs. When you select scav mode, you are spawned into a raid as a random scav, but the same rules apply. Anything you extract with, you get to keep and put in your stash. When you are a scav, you won't have to worry about AI scavs attacking you since you are one of them, but be careful because other player scavs will most likely kill you on sight, and uh, once you aggro the scavs, they will show you no mercy. This brings me to my first point. When you're first starting to play Escape from Tarkov, you want to play as a scav do scav runs every time they're available. Right now, currently, there's a 20 minute cooldown between scav runs, but you should be doing them as often as possible. This not only gives you valuable experience playing against better geared players, but is also completely free. So there's no, there's no fear of losing your gear because it was free to begin with anyways. On a good scav run, you can make out like a bandit and extract with well over 100,000 rubles in gears and guns if you play it correctly and if you have a little bit of luck on your side. This also lets you get used to learning the maps you're going to be playing on, uh, which leads me to my next tip, which is learn the maps. Do scav runs, do offline mode, do whatever you can to learn the maps. Uh, there are tutorials online, there are maps as well on Google you can check out uh, to give you an idea of the different extractions as well as uh, just the size and uh, scope of the different areas. Knowing your surroundings is extremely important to staying alive in the world of Tarkov. One tip I have for you is playing in offline mode. This is a mode that's currently allowed in the beta. I don't know if it's going to make it into the final game, but currently it's a really great resource for learning the game and learning the levels. If you click enable offline mode for this raid and then enable PvE, this will enable all the scavs to spawn into the game. So there will be AI players, you're not going to have to worry about any online players in the game. Uh, you can still die, but luckily in offline mode, if you die, you don't lose your gear. This way you can get used to the guns you're going to be using uh, and you can try out some of those cool guns you find and that awesome gear you have without risking having to lose it all. In this game, you could die in one shot depending on where you get shot and what you get shot with. So uh, playing against scavs uh, might sound like an easy chore, but when there's a lot of them and they're ganging up on you, uh, it can be quite difficult and uh, you can easily die. So this is a great form of practice and I highly recommend it for newer players to kind of get used to the game. My next tip is listen. Audio is key in this game and allows you to know the position of enemies more than any other game I feel. If you scroll wheel down, you'll see a little slider moving along ticks on the bottom left of the screen. When your scroll wheel is all the way down, you'll be at complete slow. At complete slow, you make virtually no sound. This is extremely important when you're trying to uh, zero in the position of enemies or uh, become stealthy and kind of get the drop on somebody. If you hit caps lock, it'll automatically go to full slow instantly. And then if you hit caps lock again, it'll go back to whatever uh, your speed was set to before you hit it. This is really useful for uh, immediately slowing down and not having to scroll wheel all the way uh, and this is a great way for going from complete stop to uh, full sprint uh, instantly. I also highly recommend using headphones while playing. This kind of goes without saying but uh, without them you are at a huge disadvantage. The other tip I have is putting your meds into your quick access, your quick use slots. So if you put meds in your pockets 
or even into your tactical rig, you can then drag them down into your quick use slots. This way, at any time, you can hit those buttons and without having to open your inventory, you can immediately use your meds. As you can see, I'm healing up as I'm running around. Well, normally I'd have to go into my inventory to do so. This is the game changer because you won't have to stop and uh, be vulnerable while you're, while you're fighting. And you can just um, heal on the run. This is uh, definitely something you need to get used to. And you should be doing this for basically every single raid. My next Coming tip down. is to play Factory. This, this is, in my opinion, the fastest way to getting better at this game. It also happens Loading. to be the highest sure. concentration of scavs, which means a lot of free gear and XP for killing them. Factory is a tight close quarters map that's great for getting used to gunfights. Factory is basically the equivalent of dropping into school or military base yeah. every game I'm at uh, this in staircase. PUBG. You're going to see a lot of action yeah, really quick yeah. every time. Tell me when this will turn up. you into a grizzled killing machine wiggle, wiggle your way up. Uh, in no time. It's also a great source of money and gear since you're that's guaranteed you, that's you. lots okay. of combat every time I'm at the you drop very top. Don't shoot anyone. It's clear up here. <laughs> There's so many dead bodies. Holy shit. Yeah. Inventory management is very important in this game. Another tip I have for you is to always make sure you have one slot open in your tactical rig for your current magazine. If I hit reload, I'll tuck my magazine back into my vest and it'll slide over and I'll put a fresh one, whichever one has the most ammo in it, into my gun. This way I can top off the magazine I have left over, which is also why I carry extra ammunition either in my pockets or in my tactical rig. If all of your slots are full with mags, you'll just drop the mag out of your gun because you have nowhere to tuck it. So make sure you always have one slot open for your magazine. If you end up killing guys, you can reload your gun, then quickly go over and drag ammo into your mag you just used, and now you're back at full. So now I have three full mags ready to go. Since you have a limited amount of space you can carry stuff in Tarkov, knowing what to loot and what to leave is very important. For instance, these knives with the brown handles, you should always take them off of dead scavs. They spawn almost on every single scav, and uh, there's not much use for them, except for if you can get 10 of them, you can trade them for a free MP5 from higher level Peacekeeper, who's one of the traders. So definitely always take every one of these knives you can carry. Also, these MP153 shotguns are great. Not only are they semi-automatic shotguns that are uh, devastating at close range, but at higher level Peacekeeper trader, you can trade four of these for a brand new M4. So I highly recommend uh, stockpiling these as you play the game so that when you eventually get Peacekeeper up to uh, the right trade level, you can just kind of get a bunch of free M4s. It's really nice. Uh, these shotguns and those knives um, are must grabs while you're going through the levels. All right, next up is you're gonna wanna level up your traders. Being able to trade and get the items you need is extremely important. Uh, I can't stress how important it is to level up your traders. If you look up top, you can see the level requirement, the attitude towards you, and the money spent with them. So these are going to constantly go up as your current attitude and loyalty levels rise. But these are things to keep an eye on. Um, you can spend money them on them by either selling items to them, buying items for them, or using them to repair your gear or insuring your items. Early on, the traders aren't going to have a lot of items, but eventually when you level them up, you'll be able to buy all sorts of useful things from them. Uh, not only being able to buy them, but also trade for them. For instance, uh, these toolkits, if you trade two of them to Prop War, he'll give you a brand new black AK-74N. Uh, stuff like that is important to keep track of. Some of the traders have tasks you can do. These are basically quests, uh, and you can activate them, and you'll get different rewards for completing the quests, and you'll see there is a... Uh, certain uh, requirements to completing the quest. Some of them have time limits, so keep an eye on that. But most of them, uh, you can just kind of stack up and do as you play the game. For instance, this one is uh, the first of the Punisher quests, and it's kill 20 scavs on shoreline. Uh, but if you see, it gives me 40,000 rubles, uh, and basically level three body armor and level three helmet, as well as 10,000 experience, and it'll also make Prop War like me more. So this is a great way for getting money, gear, and also experience to level your characters up. The traders I would recommend leveling up first would be uh, Skier and Peacekeeper. Skier will allow you to buy things like body armor, helmets, uh, but most importantly, he'll allow you to buy backpacks. So the first backpacks you start off in the game with are, are like these M buses, uh, which are too small to fit most guns, uh, most long rifles. 
So basically you want to get it to the point where you can get these scav backpacks. These scav backpacks will allow you to stack shotguns and rifles inside of them. Uh, this will allow you to um, get a lot more money quickly. That way uh, in the game you can only carry two main rifles, but with this scav backpack you can carry an extra two more and sell them. Uh, so if you go in a raid and you get a couple AKs off of some dead scabs, you can trade them for a ton of money. So um, that's one of the reasons why skier is very important. Uh, the amount of gear you can carry out of the raid is limited and skier is going to allow you to carry more out and uh, make more money in the long run. Peacekeeper on the other hand, he is uh, he's the man when it comes to guns. He sells all the American guns and he sells a lot of attachments that are necessary like suppressors and grips and stuff like that. Peacekeeper is the one you're going to be able to get the free MP5s for by trading in 10 of these knives as well as M4s. You'll be able to trade four of these shotguns for M4s or you can just straight buy them out with cash. My next tip it's is uh, to run raids yeah, with I friends. Tarkov is a scary world out there, so it's a good idea to bring some backup. Not only can they watch your back, but they can also get revenge when you die. It's just a more fun experience uh, when you have those awesome moments happen. You have He's someone down. there to share with. He's down, loading. With that said, communication is key when is playing with the squad, so make sure you yeah. know where all your teammates are and that communicate when you move, He's shoot, down. or see I'm, other enemies. I, I'm next to you. Uh, there I, are a lot of times where your... I've been killed or have killed friends of mine because of poor communication, and that's always a buzz Once kill. Once again, least damaged part, left leg. <sighs> we did it. You My stick. final tip is to do your you research. Did I did. There are tons I of awesome Tarkov. videos on YouTube and uh, Twitch streamers who have been playing this game for a long time, uh, who are really experienced and you can learn a ton by watching their content. Did. So do your homework and learn from more experienced players. I'll have links in the descriptions of channels I personally watch and recommend that you should check out. Uh, you'll be amazed at uh, how quickly you'll become better at this game just by watching someone who's more experienced do a raid. Well, that's it. Hope you guys found this video helpful. Tarkov can be quite a commitment to learn, but I believe uh, that's part of why uh, this game is so rewarding to play. So uh, hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, good luck out there, and happy hunting. Also, if you don't know, I've been live streaming uh, a lot of Escape from Tarkov on here right on YouTube. So go ahead and subscribe uh, to stay up to date on future videos and uh, live streams where you can learn more. I'll see you guys then.